Hey, everybody, welcome out to sunny Los Angeles, Southern California, as Ohio State gets one day closer to the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. We've got a rapid reaction after the defensive media day uh, here on Tuesday morning. Going to break down some of that with Jeremy Birmingham when we get right back here on a practice report. It's brought to you by Byers Auto. All right, Berm, I miss you. It's not the same out here at this very famous media hotel for the Rose Bowl, one of your favorite uh, favorite places in the entire world. I know that for sure. Uh, and uh, it's it's just not the same vibe, man. I miss you. I wish we weren't doing it this way. But we're going to make sure that we can do the best we can with any practice report, rapid reaction brought to you by Byers Auto throughout the week, even though we can't be together. Yeah, you know, just sort of uh, bowl season has felt weird from the start. And obviously, as you see all the COVID cancellations around the country, start to understand maybe why uh, there has been a cutback in some capacities and making sure it doesn't make a lot of sense to send multiple people around the country when you don't know if a game's going to get played. But uh, certainly I was mentioning it to, to the wife this morning. It, is this what it's like? Because I looked at the TV schedule and there's five bowl games on on Tuesday and I get to watch them. So uh, I'm excited about that. I am not excited about the fact that you're in the sunshine, but I get to go to Texas next week for the Army All-American game or the All-American game, not Army anymore, but whatever. Uh, but before then, there are important things happening in the Rose Bowl. And, you know, obviously that started on Monday when four Ohio State players who we kind of knew were going to opt out uh, finally made it official with Chris Olave being sort of the the, the straggler. Uh, what was the mood like out there as all that news broke yesterday? Yeah, and I, I think I want to be clear that there's a lot of conversation about this and what it means for college football as a whole. And we can have those discussions uh, a lot. But for these four players and for the Ohio State Brotherhood, there is a, there's support, there is understanding, there is uh, a blessing, if you want to put it that way, from their teammates, that these guys have so much at stake. Uh, when you're talking about, you know, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson with first round draft status, nobody was expecting them to play. Chris Olave was really torn about it. Uh, and that's why he's still around the team this week. Uh, he's, he's not going through any team drills or anything like that, but he's here, he's wearing the gear. Um, and I think people appreciate that about that captaincy. Haskell Garrett was dealing with injuries. That's sort of a separate matter. Uh, and then you have Nicholas Petit Ferrer where, Everybody knows what throughout the season the talk was about his future and what that could become. So you know, nobody in the Ohio State locker room, nobody on the coaching staff is upset about these decisions. It's a delicate balancing act. And I asked Ryan Day about this on Monday. Like, you want to win this game. Ohio State is not chalking it up as, oh, well, who cares? It's an exhibition. We're going to go through it like a spring game. That's not how they're treating it. But you have to manage that with the fact that it doesn't count to define a season. There's not a championship on the line. So these things, it's just part of the million changes that Ryan Day talked to you about uh, on the early signing period, Bermanology. You have to adjust and adapt. And it's an opportunity to not only win a game, but also to lay the foundation for 2022. You have to embrace both, both parts of that. Yeah, and I think that's actually the interesting thing because I, I do believe that there is a perspective out there from, from some folks that other players on the team might be upset about this and, oh, you're taking away our chance to win or, or hurting our chance to win. But these guys go through all this stuff together, and what they care about is that their brother gets an opportunity to go out there and succeed. But also, it's an opportunity now for these guys to get to, to put their names on the map. And I think that you know, in both ways, it's something that the guys who are still playing in the game are actually very excited about. Because if you look at a player like Julian Fleming, if you look at a player like uh, Emeka Abuka or Marvin Harris. And these guys have been waiting patiently for the last year to get this opportunity. Julian Fleming, especially, you know, we talk all, all off season about Jamison Williams and how his future was changed by Chris Olave's decision to return to Ohio State. I don't know necessarily if Olave had returned that Jamison Williams wouldn't have left, but I do know that if Olave hadn't returned, Julian Fleming would have been a feature part of the offense this year for Ohio State. And now healthy, uh, with a month ahead of time to really get an opportunity to, to be part of the game plan. I think it's exciting for a kid like Julian to show people what he can do. And I expect him to have a big game on Saturday because of it. I expect Marvin Harrison and Emeka Abuka to, to pop up on that national spotlight. And then, you know, on the defensive tackle side of things, that's a position Ohio State. It, it is a developmental position for Ohio State. But this is an opportunity, in my opinion, and you mentioned him on the Letterman Lounge on the forum. And for Ty Hamilton, I think this is a Ty Hamilton game. I think he's going to have that that first real opportunity to show Buckeyes fans, hey, uh, my, I wasn't just in this class in, in this class of 2020 because my brother played at Ohio State. Ty Hamilton can play ball. He can. And I think, you know, look, we can go down all the lists. Teron Vincent's got a, 
an opportunity to step up and play big. He's he's going to have to get a lot more snaps if Ohio State's going to stop this Utah rushing attack. And, and when Zach Harrison and, and Tyreek Smith talked just upstairs here behind, like, yeah, it's not ideal for the Ohio State defensive line on Saturday to try and stop Utah without an All-American defensive tackle. That's a big deal. But they didn't just find out that this was going to happen. So there's been uh, fundamental work and, and back to basics and, you know, some off-season workouts, things that already started to help, you know, with Ty Hamilton, Teron Benson, uh, Ty Leak Williams, you know, trying to get over that freshman kind of wall that he hit in the middle of the year, Michael Hall. These guys have had weeks to prepare. Now, does that mean that they're going to be Haskell Garrett on Saturday? Almost certainly not. But there there are opportunities here for Ohio State to, as I said, it's, it's about embracing this reality. And yeah. not everyone may not like it. I know you don't for what it might mean for the future of college football. I, and I certainly understand all that part of it, but you have to you have to look at this for what it is and the opportunity that it can be. And if they win the game, it's great. They want to win. They're not they're not trying to lose. Uh, these guys are out there and they're very competitive. And Zach Harrison is playing. Tyreek Smith is playing. Uh, they don't they didn't have to. We'll see what Zach Harrison ultimately decides. He still is on the fence about his decision. Uh, but he said he was going to play in this game no matter what. I was, I was basically I was leading him to a question. And trying not to force him to ask answer it before he was ready, but like, don't you have to decide if you're going to play in the Rose Bowl before you can decide if you're going pro? And he kind of, you know, saw that coming and said, well, he, he's going to do it either way. But I think that's important for this defense. The other part of it, Berm, is Matt Barnes talking upstairs, and, and Jim Knowles kind of hangs over everything for Ohio State right now. I know that the, the attention has tried to be on winning that game and getting to New Year's Day, but it's hard for the coaching staff. It's hard for the players when a lot of this conversation is about the next defensive coordinator. It's just not enjoyable for any of them to be uh, in this spot. Knowles was around the team for a day or two. He met individually with uh, members of the coaching staff, and he had a, a, a day sort of where he got to introduce himself to the team. Most of them are still not looking at you know Oklahoma State film or how they fit into that that scheme that may be coming in for Ohio State on the second. But uh, certainly, there's going to continue to be questions about that because a lot of this is tied into the future. Yeah, I think that's why people are understandably skeptical about. Uh, Ohio State's motivation heading into this game this weekend. Not only do you have four starters opting out, you know, the week of the game, but this isn't like Alabama a year ago where you didn't know who was going to play because Tommy Togiai tests positive and then you, you lose players. It's also not like Alabama because, the, you know, Najee Harris and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle and Mac Jones aren't out there. But uh, <laughs> certainly you can prepare yourself a little bit more for what Utah is going to do offensively. You have a good idea of who they are. Uh, with Alabama as multiple as they were, losing a key defensive tackle made a big difference. But getting back to the original point, when you talk about motivation, it is hard to understand where Ohio State's players, but not just their players, where their coaches' heads are as you head into this because you have a defensive staff that really doesn't know who's going to be there a week from now and who's not. And that is a, a very difficult thing to process, but this is why Ohio State is Ohio State. Uh, you hire professionals. You hire people who you know can – can handle their job and compartmentalize the things that are going on. Uh, you know, Matt Barnes very simply could have said, oh, I'm not interested in doing this media day today and let, uh, you know, Al Washington or Larry Johnson or, or Parker Fleming or anybody else go out there. But all these guys, whether they're auditioning for the future for the NFL, whether they're auditioning for a starting role in Jim Knowles defense, whether they're auditioning for an opportunity to stay on the defensive staff with Ryan Day and Jim Knowles next year, everybody has something to gain this weekend at Ohio State uh, against Utah. And I think that that ultimately, you know, talent being what it is, Ohio State is a more talented roster than Utah. But you look at the the, the line dropped from six and a half to four and a half uh, on Monday night after all the departures were announced. And I don't know. I don't know if it should really matter if Ohio State goes out and handles its business up front offensively and C.J. Stroud and Trey Henderson and Jackson Smith and Jigba and Julian Fleming and Marvin Harrison and Rebecca Buka and Jaden Ballard and Jeremy Record and all these other guys do what they're supposed to do. Wow, still a really talented team. That's weird. Um, the part that impressed me about Matt Barnes was that, as you said, he, you know, he knew that these questions were going to come, and it's not easy. I, I just sort of asked him like what it's been like for the last three weeks when you know uh, that the situation's got to be uncomfortable in those defensive meetings. And, you know, if you if he meets Jim Knowles, what that may be like, and you know, I don't know what's going to happen definitively at this point. But Matt Barnes mentioned something about watching a, a lot of Oklahoma State film. Uh, this month and getting a feel for what that what changes may come uh, either either that was uh, a fabrication or he's somebody who is preparing to still have a role for the Buckeyes moving forward either, or it could be uh, 
preparing and hoping that he has a role. Yeah. I don't know exactly how that will work out, but you know, he, he has met with it with him. I think he's done a pretty good job as a position coach. You've said that at times he's been underrated as a recruiter. I'm not sure, you know, that uh, Ryan Day has given up on a lot of the investment that he's poured into Matt Barnes at this point. Well, you know, we'll have to see how that happens, but he's done, he's said he's been devouring a ton of film on that, not only to get ready for Utah and looking what happened to Ohio State in the game, but also to prepare for what's next because all of this comes back to that balancing act where Ohio State has to be looking at 2022 because it doesn't want to be in a game that doesn't matter again at this time next year. But you also don't want to be heading into the offseason on a two-game losing streak with a ton of questions around your program. And so, again, I think it comes down to pride and an opportunity to to put your best foot forward. And for a guy like Matt Barnes, for Al Washington, for even for Kerry Combs and Larry Johnson, I mean, these guys have to show, hey, what I do fits into this new defense. And Ryan Day and Ohio State is not paying Jim Knowles what they're paying him to come in and be a curator of Ryan Day's, of Ryan Day's defense. This is going to be a Jim Knowles show. Ryan Day has to trust him. Uh, that is a, a very challenging thing for a young head coach to allow yourself to surrender some uh, responsibility and to surrender some authority. But that's what's going to have to happen. Uh, Matt Barnes, to plug another Bermanology episode, Matt Barnes, when he was on my show, said hey, he's a football nerd. I'm sure he's excited to just get an opportunity to pick Jim Knowles' brain and see how he did what he did at Oklahoma State, a, a program that traditionally had been completely devoid of defense. Uh, and to turn it into a top five defense in the country. So for Ohio State, the, the interesting thing is where how they handle it from here to Saturday. Because as we've seen in college football, we talked about this on Letterman Live on Monday, you just don't know what's going to happen over these next couple of days. I assume, and perhaps you can shed some light on this uh, since you're out there, uh, Ohio State is done testing for COVID or not? I don't believe there will be any testing of asymptomatic players. So that will be the issue. They have ramped up. Uh, sort of their attention to detail. We've seen, um, you know, inside the Woody throughout this season, we know that uh, Ohio State, once you're vaccinated, you haven't had to be subject to that sort of daily testing anymore, obviously. Um, masks in, in that building that's, you know, everyone around there uh, has taken care of that business that they were required to do. They didn't have to wear them for practice. And, and other than the media members, when, when we were in there, even though we were all vaccinated, you know, they didn't wear masks for those press conferences. All the rest of us did. But they're doing that this week. That's one step. The, uh, the four or five players that were here, plus Matt Barnes, uh, yesterday at Disneyland, all wearing their masks out, even even outside. Uh, that's not going to be the case later on this afternoon at practice, of course. They're not going to be playing and practicing in those. But, um, you know, the, the Lowry's Beef Bowl, uh, that was canceled, an event that, you know. Oh, no. With a bunch of people eating uh, together, crammed in together. They finally realized that might not be the smartest move. Um, so th- there have been some – they're a little bit tighter about their protocols this week. Ohio State, again, they want to play in this game. They're going to do what it takes uh, if that means wearing masks in situations that they uh, didn't have to before uh, around the team, inside a hotel, at, at a media day. Uh, they've taken those steps. Um, you know, I, I think unless you are showing clear symptoms, and Ohio State has had a few uh, positive tests, uh, Ryan Day only uh, didn't name players. We, we never do that here anyway. Uh, that sort of private matter until the availability report comes out or a player confirms it. Uh, his, his medical information himself uh, just said that they were not key contributors and all of the sort of the starters that have been scheduled to talk over the last two days so far have. So um, that's what we know about that situation. And uh, as you said, uh, it can change in a hurry, but that's where they are right now. Um, that's all we can add to the practice report here on a Tuesday that's brought to you by Byers Auto. we got a lot more coming as we try and make the best of this situation with only uh, one set of boots on the ground. I miss Berm dearly. Uh, it's not going to be the same here out at the Rose Bowl, but we're going to plow forward as we as much as we can to get to New Year's Day in Ohio State at Utah. This, as always, is brought to you by Byers Auto. We will see you next time at LettermanRoad.com.